We've had some fun with cars, bikes, etc. Now it's time to have some fun in military contraptions. Bit of a change today, up on the Yorkshire Hills, as opposed to down on the track. We're going to be in some tanks, amphibious machines, four-wheel drives, track. Something a little bit different. Well, apparently it's not as easy as it looks. And today, to show me how it's done, is Steve Parker. Steve, how are you doing? Hiya, pleased to meet you. And you, sir. Could you run through what we're going to be actually driving today? Yeah, sure. We've got the AC Millens over here. This is the Mark III. Okay. It's a 20 ton recovery truck, used for vehicle recovery, winching, craning, whatever. Next to it, we've got the Alvis Stalwart. That's a Mark II, the later model. They're uh, amphibious, capable of carrying three tons of load in, in water and uh, five ton cross country. They were designed to keep up with the Chieftains and the Abbots and other armoured vehicles, okay. or whatever, as a, as a support vehicle. Serious tool. Absolutely, yeah. Next to it, we've got the uh, Daimler Ferret, the Scout car. Okay. It's an excellent machine, that. Made in these mid 60s, that one. Next to it, we've got the uh, Volvo Snowcat. Right. Used extensively in the Falklands. The uh, designed to run over six foot of freshly felled snow and soft ground and bogs and stuff. So that's what he had. And the capable of carrying and a ton. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, and capable of carrying a ton. Right. But we're a bit short of snow today, so we'll uh, <laughs> we'll find some interesting and muddy bits and stuff as we go along, as you'll find out as the day progresses. Okay. And the tank. I mean. Yeah, it's not. Actually, it's not a tank. It's a self-propelled gun. It's an Abbott self-propelled gun. The difference being is that a tank will fire on the move. Right. Well, this is designed as an artillery piece, so sort of pull up to an area, then it's fired then from an area over the troops' heads and stuff and so on. The gun is actually capable of uh, firing a shot 12 mile. Right, that's definitely so something powerful, I didn't know about. Yeah, it's quite a powerful, powerful machine. Guns and stuff. Yeah. So, obviously, this is the main attraction, yeah. the hard one to drive, so we'll leave that to the end of the day. What yeah, are we going to sure. start off in? We'll start off in the ferret. Okay, just to simplify things and get the grips of it, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go have a look. Yeah, smash him. So, Steve, although this is the smallest vehicle of today, it still looks quite intimidating. Is it easy to, to drive or hard, or what's the, what's the situation? It's not too heavy. It's uh, a bit tricky, but it's not too difficult, really. You soon master it. So it's something to get the grasp with quite easy, on the move, yeah. no problems. Steam is a bit heavy, gear's a bit tricky, but apart from that, you're, you're all right. Let's give it a bash. Smash it. Driving the Ferris Scout car was a bit difficult in terms of the steering wheel and stuff, not that you could really see inside it, it's upside down, it's hard to get a grip of things, you've got to keep your thumbs out of the way, it's not very forgiving if the wheels get caught in the rut, the steering wheel gives a good tug, if your thumbs are locked in there, it's likely to snap them off, so it's very important in what way you control it and drive it. Steady on accelerator, but it was a fun tool to actually manoeuvre and learn the, the course in more than anything. If the rest of the day is going to be this interesting, fantastic, that's Shane's world. Out of the way, let's move this till we get into something else. 